Mateo smiled at his reflection and seized a brand new day. For no matter what would happen next, his dragons had been slain. And that was written by a 14-year-old, last year's winner of the Emerging Author Award. Ms. Zorsky, can you go over the rules again for this year's competition? Entry applications are right here on my desk, for those of you who are interested. And remember, the winners get to have their work published. Hey! Aha, how'd I know? Short stories and poems must be typewritten, double-spaced. Deadline is the end of this week. Oh, my gosh. Relax, Ginger. You work well under pressure. Then don't relax. What are you going to write? Well, maybe it should be about me. Remember the time I slipped and fell during an ice dancing performance and needed stitches in my chin? That was a real crowd pleaser. Thanks, Dodi, but I think it's supposed to be fiction. Well, you can just make something up that goes at the end. Like, maybe I learned to fly. Not bad, Bishop. Not bad at all. <laughs> Thanks, you guys, but I think I'll just do what I always do. Sit down, clear my mind, and wait for the story to come to me. Yep, that'll never work. <laughs> the vanishing powder on sale in your shop window. Why is it on sale, anyway? I'd be happy to charge you boys full price. Louie, I beg, I plead, don't be absurd. Thing of it is, I find I only have enough coinage for the vanishing powder and not for the reversal potion, which I see is sold separately. Uh, buying just the powder without the potion would be a tad irresponsible, don't you think? Looks like Louie couldn't give a rat tiny, huh, Carl? <sighs> I'll take the vanishing powder, please. No bag, just a receipt. Talk to me. I'm listening. She chose to walk alone, though others wondered why. Refused to look before her, kept eyes cast upwards towards the sky. She didn't have companions, no need for earthly things. Only wanted freedom from what she felt were puppet strings. She longed to be a bird, that she might fly away. She pitied every blade of grass, for planted they would stay. She longed to be a flame, that brightly danced alone. Felt jealous of the steam that made the air its only home. Well... What do you think so far? And you can be honest. I think you might want to be careful about who you let catch you talking to major household appliances. But don't worry, your secret's safe with us. Ain't that right, Cooley? The person we vanish has to be a total non-presence. Someone that no one would miss. I believe expendable is the word you're looking for. And without Grippling, whose life would we make miserable? Without Higsby, who would we make fun of all the time? I was thinking we could vanish Higsby and just, you know, start making fun of Blake more frequently. If we vanish the wrong person, we run the risk of undoing life as we know it. Wow. Major. So let's choose wisely, shall we? Reagan Eust? Class Brain. Heather Farnes? Class Kiss Up. Max Montgomery? Class Obsessive Compulsive Hand Washer. Come on, Hood, you're gonna have to dig a little deeper in the crates here. Look beyond the obvious. I'm talking living, breathing wallpaper. Bingo! Now, I already told you, Grippling isn't a candidate. Who's talking about Grippling? I'm talking Sussman. Noel Sussman. Who? My point exactly. 
Some say she wished too hard. Some say she wished too long. But we awoke one autumn day to find that she was gone. I think this might actually be good. You sure this is her seat? It's what the seating chart says. Hurry, Carl. 40 seconds to bell. It says apply liberally. Should I use the whole box? I don't know, Carl. I don't know. I think I got some on my arm. Be careful, Carl. This ought to do it. it says here she'll vanish within 24 hours. Cool. Well, I don't know. They're too short. And my mother's going to go. my foot. 8.35 a.m. Sussman has come into contact with the magic powder. No immediate signs of vanishing. Ladies and gentlemen, Hoodsy, take out last night's vocabulary homework and clear your desk of all other paraphernalia. Paraphernalia, personal belongings, equipment, or apparatus. No one likes a suck-up, Brandon. Duly noted. What's she doing, Carl? If I'm not mistaken, I think she's making fun of us. Is that thumb finger supposed to be me, Carl? Yep. <laughs> she's funny, Carl. Well, what do you think? And you can be totally honest, because... Sit down, Ginger. You don't like it. It's not that, Ginger. It's not that at all. It's very well written. But? But? It's a little troubling. <laughs> I know. Isn't it sad? I mean, my eyes were practically welling up with tears when I wrote it. It's as if she was someone I knew. I mean... Miss Zorsky? Ginger. I want to show this to Dr. Leventhal, the school psychologist. Why? Just to get her thoughts. There are some very heavy feelings in this poem. Feelings that should be discussed. But it's fiction. It's creative writing. Uh, I don't understand. What did I do wrong? You didn't do anything wrong. Am I still allowed to enter the competition? Of course you are, Ginger. See Dr. Leventhal first thing in the morning. And let me know how it goes, okay? How is it possible to go from feeling so good to feeling so bad? Surrender. Never, never. I say it again. Never! Oh, no. She's really weird. No kidding. How did I not notice this? How, Hoods? Maybe it won't work. I never thought I would say this, but I hope that Louie really did scam us this time. Because I have a sinking feeling that Noelle Sussman is anything but expendable. Gee, Ginger, I know Strogodoff isn't your favorite, but lighten up. Ginger, sometimes when my mother is feeling down, she locks herself in the bathroom and screams into a hand towel. Do you want to try doing that? Maybe just talking about it? I really don't want to get into it, you guys. Okay. It's about what I wrote. Knew it! I knew it! Drew a blank, did ya? Well, don't come cry to Dodie. You had your chance. You really- Macy, I finished my poem. And I was feeling great about it. I mean, here I thought I'd written this totally moving piece, but- But what? I showed it to Ms. Zorsky, and she said it concerned her. And now she wants me to show it to the school psychologist. She's treating me like I'm a total head case. 
I don't understand, Ginger. What's the story about? Nothing. It's just about a girl. Can we hear it? Some say she wished too hard, some say she wished too long, but we awoke one autumn day to find that she was gone. The trees, they say, stood witness. The sky refused to tell. But someone who had seen it said the story played out well. She spread her arms out wide, breathed in the break of dawn, she just let go of all she held, and then she was gone. Poor dear! We didn't even know you were suffering. What? Man, if I'd have known you were, like, clinically depressed, I might have gone a little easier on you. You guys, this poem isn't about me. It's made up, you know, like fiction. I mean, there are days I really wished you'd disappear. But I had no idea you felt that way, too. I don't. All right, back to your tables, people. Break it up, move along, there's nothing to see here. You guys believe me, right? The poem is just a poem. I wrote it for the contest. Sure, Ginger. You betcha. Only, if you ever did want to go away, like the girl in your story, we just hope that you'd tell us. BFFs, you know? You guys, I am not, I repeat, I am not depressed! If one of you doesn't say something, I'm gonna call one of those parental help hotlines. I mean it! Ugh, that's just it, Mom. I mean, what's with the total alarmist attitude? Can a kid lie on the couch apathetically without it being, like, a, a national emergency? Uh, Ginge? I'm sorry, it's just that... Everyone at school is making this really big deal about something that isn't a big deal, and now Zorsky wants me to see the school psychologist, and all my friends are treating me like I'm nuts. Dr. Leventhal, huh? Well, if Zorsky thinks so. But I don't want to see a psychiatrist. I'm not crazy. Crazy? Crazy? Crazy spending four months of allowance to get rid of something that you actually really like. That, my friend, is crazy. Nicely written, Ginger. Thanks. Ginger, are you able to recognize that your leading lady is, well, a little morose? I guess. Well, that's why we asked you here. Our concern is that these feelings are coming from somewhere inside you, Ginger. Are there times that you wish you could disappear? Does right now count? <laughs> guess that wasn't the answer you were looking for. I can't believe it. I vanished her. I, I I totally vanished her. Don't take it so hard, Carl. You still have me. Mrs. Gordon, uh, do you have any information on Noel Sussman's whereabouts? Mr. Foutley, while I'm on the subject of Helen of Troy, I will only accept questions that are relevant to Helen of Troy. Okay. Does Helen of Troy have any information on Noel Sussman's whereabouts? It's kind of important. In the hallway, Foutley! That's it! Seventh period rap group for girls like you. Girls like me? <gasps> Courtney? What's wrong? Well, you're not the only one with problems, okay? Things have been really hard for me, too, lately. You gotta be kidding. Oh, you didn't think I was just going to sit back and let you corner the problem child market, did you? Well, did you? Being miserable earned you scads of extra attention. And who doesn't need scads of extra attention, Ginger? I'm not miserable, Courtney. Of course not. Not with all that extra attention. I don't want any extra attention. Well, stop yelling at me. I told you I'm in a fragile emotional space right now. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone. Just everyone has lost it. And they actually think there's something wrong with me. Maybe 
she's in a better place now, Carl. Ever think of that? She was weird. She was genuinely bizarre. She was right under our noses and we never even noticed her. How about if I read to you from your favorite reference book of all time? Entertaining penguins? You betcha. Where is it? Where is it? Entertaining penguins! It's not on the shelf! Well, let's just see here. Um, the book was last checked out by a... Oh, Noelle Sussman. In fact, it's due back today. She was a fan of entertaining penguins? The most absurd reference book of all time? This just can't be happening. But it is. You vanished your favorite book right along with her. Who cares about the book, Hoods? Don't you see? She was like my, my soulmate. Carl! I gotta do something. I gotta get her back. Carl, get a hold of yourself. Carl, I beg you. Is this all the information we could get our hands on? Is this all? This is a lot, Carl. Look at all this stuff. I've got transcripts, photographs. I think I may even have a urine sample in here somewhere. She was born in Portugal. She has a pet flamingo. She's obsessed with black holes. She won't touch veal. And she was an extra on three episodes of Town Square. She was left back in kindergarten for non-compliance, and she refused to lay down on a mat. Are you serious? I gotta get her back, no matter what it costs. She's worth it. But we don't have nearly enough money for the reversal potion. I passed by the store this morning and the sale's over. Louie jacked the price back up. Then I'll just have to sell something. Something with a very high street value. Carl, you're talking crazy stuff. Crazy! Let's just slow down a moment here. Try to regroup. Can we do that, Carl? Okay, now. Sure. Noelle was a real individual. And somebody we probably would have even liked to chill with. But she's gone. And selling the eyeball will only make that gone, too. No! We can bring her back, Hoods. If the vanishing powder worked, the reversal potion will, too. But Carl, who are you going to sell the eyeball to at this late hour? It's almost dinner. The most motivated buyer I know. Carl Feltley to Blake. Come in, Blake. I know what you're thinking. It's like... You can't really make a sandwich without it, but 12 grams of fat per tablespoon, who needs? Hi, Mom. It's not about mayo. Ginge, I know you don't want to talk about it, but I just wanted to tell you that I really loved your poem. It gave me the full-blown chills, and I mean it. Way to go, kid. But, Mom, didn't you find it troubling and disturbing? Aren't you worried that I'm the girl in the story, tragically depressed and crying out for help? No. I know exactly who you are. You're a bright, sensitive young woman. The kind of person who understands people's feelings. Which is why you can write about them so beautifully. You always make me feel better, Mom. How do you do that? Listen, kid. You don't have to be afraid of your feelings. Ever. No matter what they are. And no one knows you better than you know yourself. So don't let people try to convince you that you're someone you're not. Even if they do have a PhD. If you don't like talking to Dr. Leventhal, you could always talk to Dr. Mom. I'll give you a break on my hourly, too, okay? Thanks again, Mom, for making me feel normal. The potion! The potion! My eyeball for the potion! Carl, I beg you reconsider! And it's like, if you want to use my styling products, just ask first! <laughs> just ask! Ask! That's all I'm saying! Ask! <laughs> Courtney. <laughs> yes? As heart-wrenching as this story is, maybe we could discuss something else. Like, perhaps, your perpetual need to be the center of attention? Tomorrow's students, there will be an in-class examination on the material we cover today. So pay extra close attention, Mr. Bishop. Deposit potion liberally around the vanishing site. Carl Fatley! What on earth do you suppose you're doing? I'm sorry, Mrs. Gordon. I'm sorry for everything. This is all my fault. 
Of course it is. You're the one dumping a sticky mess on my classroom floor. I'm talking about the disappearance of Noelle Sussman. Keep quiet, Carl. You're selling yourself up the river. I vanished the most extraordinary girl to ever stroll the lucky elementary corridors. I vanished Noelle Sussman. What on earth are you talking about? You didn't vanish anyone. The Sussman family moved across town. Noelle was transferred to Happy Flower Elementary on 3rd. Now take your seat. Carl Foutley, get back here this instant. Find himself as observed by these birds as he is observing them, which led Charles Darwin to quip. What penguins like the most, what penguins like the best, is for humans to entertain them while they sit back and rest. Hello, Carl. So, uh, you didn't actually think you were going to make off with that library book, did you? whole group therapy thing is over, I guess it wasn't that bad. I'm kind of glad I stuck with it. I mean, talking about your feelings is a pretty good way to pass time, you know? I think the reason my poem struck a nerve was because everyone related to the main character, including me. Because maybe us writers do put a little of ourselves onto every page, and maybe I didn't write that story just for the contest. Maybe I had something to say. But no matter what happens with the competition, I already got more out of it than I meant to. Because somehow, in writing that poem, I got a chance to know myself a little better. To see myself a little more clearly. And I kind of like what I saw. So even if I don't get published, I guess in some ways, I already feel like I won.